We're working with the Burnett Funlock B42 cover stitch machine. And if you've just opened it up, I wanna show you from the beginning threading this machine. So this is so nice. Actually, because it's a cover stitch only machine, there is some very simple features. Uh, we are gonna thread up originally with all three needles, which are currently in the machine. And then down below, there is one looper we'll be threading and everything's color coded. Now, if you have just opened up your machine it might look a little naked back here so I just thought I'd come around to the back and then also to note that if you are putting it back in the box this is something you can actually take off so everything in the styrofoam um, kind of sits back correctly. So this was actually in the top part of the box. So it is removed if you're transporting it there. So you can kind of see that there's just a little levers and then just slide it until it clicks. And then to take it off, it's just the opposite way. So we're just going to set that down, click it in place. And then this part here, just find the little opening and that will sit all the way down. Next, this is usually telescoped down. So make sure you bring it all the way up to its highest position and um, align the top with the set of threads. Now, the other thing that you can do is pull out your cone holders and those will go up through the cone and just kind of stabilize them as they're on the machine so they don't wiggle around as much. So if you just do it like this, they can kind of roll around. And if you're using smaller cones of or smaller spools, like a soy machine size spool, they're there are little spool caps that you can use for that. So I'm actually putting on actual coded and color coded threads. So I'm putting um, the pink where the kind of the purple is, there's a blue, a green, and a yellow. So you'll be able to follow along exactly with my threading and also what the final results are. Start by making sure that your presser foot is up. Now, when you reach back here, it will feel opposite than your soy machine. And that's because when you have fabric going through, you don't want the hand down and catchable, you want it up and out of the way. So it'll feel opposite, but just make sure that that presser foot is up because then all these tension discs open up. You will notice that there is a threading order recommendation right here on the inside. And it recommends that I start with my cover stitch color. It's noted as kind of that purple color, but today I am pink. So I am taking my thread all the way up to the thread stand, and then I'll bring it down to the guide here. One thing nice about the guides is that they're actually all open. So if you forget one, you can just easily kind of rehook it in. Um, you don't have to start over. So all the guides will be the same here just take your your thread and kind of give it a little floss and then underneath this little button and you can even just make sure that it gets down in these tension discs just go ahead and give it a little pull or flossing here and then go ahead and follow the guides that are all labeled purple now i'm a fan of tweezers so they're always sitting right here you can get a hold of them so again just make sure that you're following the guides there are a few extra guides that are not color coded in here so for this one take your thread and you're going to go clicking it from the top down. But for this one, we're bringing it from the bottom up. The next part, make sure you come under it completely. You're catching not only the, the metal loop, but you're also catching this little spring action guy here too. Next, make sure your needles are up. And our last little guide is right here. And we're gonna just take our thread and come up from the underneath side and it'll hook right in. Now there's a place way in the back of this looper, kind of like back where his elbow is that you need to also thread. But there is a little place that we're gonna be lifting and it's gonna take the thread to the back. Now here's a little trick. You can actually do it right here. You have to kind of slip it behind and get it to lay in that little notch. Or you can actually take the thread, thread it through the looper itself and kind of pretty much skip that for a second and then bring that lever all the way up. I'm kind of holding this thread with a little bit of uh, resistance and then it'll just take it all away lift it until you can't lift it anymore and then it stays in that little back elbow you know you did it right when the thread lays in this groove here now here's the part you're gonna love when you're done doing a cover stitch looper all you need to do is leave yourself all oh, three four inches of tail of the thread 
and just let it dangle right here. Don't even worry about where it is and close the door. Don't even think about it because it's gonna come up when we take our first stitch. Next, we just have needles, our left needle, center needle, and right needle. And it really doesn't matter which order you thread them in. And you can even kind of bring all of the threads up to the top at once and then get them ready to be threaded. Now, of course, we can do a cover stitch with just two needles, and then, of course, we'll be doing our chain stitch with only one needle. So it just depends on which one you're actually using. Uh, it depends on which one you're threading. So again, make sure your presser foot is up. We're gonna go ahead and follow the same path down, but then we're gonna be coming across. As we come across, we're gonna pretty much find three little grooves, and I will tell you, it probably doesn't matter very much which groove has which in it, but I am going to kind of line them up when I get to this point, and then we're gonna slide it behind the guide at the top of the needle. Now, there is a needle threader that is in your front cover door. It's this one right here and if it doesn't look like much trust me I'm gonna show you how you're gonna love this needle threader you'll probably notice that when you have all three note needles in that the left one is the highest and the right one is the lowest so to give you a little bit more room make sure you lower the presser foot and then you can get to that right needle a little easier so this needle threader that comes with this machine there is a couple of cool things number one it's going to plunge the thread through the eye you can actually do this with your eyes closed, trust me. So you will find that there is a little notch at the top of your needle threader, and there is another notch on the opposite side. So as long as one of those notches is facing up, you are holding it correctly. Next, set your thread so it lays in his mouth. So it's kind of horizontal to the notch that's on the top. Next, as I put the needle threader straight in front of the needle and push in gently, there will be a little tongue that will sit in the groove. Did you notice there's a groove on the front of every sewing machine needle? So as you slide down, what's gonna happen is when it gets to the hole, it will just pop in and it will slide that all the way in until it pushes a loop right on through. If you want, take your tweezers and just pull that thread all the way out. Now, if you are doing this one needle at a time, make sure that you raise your presser foot back up uh, so you get the other two needles threaded through the tension. I'll do that needle threader one more time for you, actually two more times, but let me just go ahead. I'm gonna bring down the center uh, needle thread, lay it in one of the grooves here, lay it in the little mouth, they all go in here, and then bring it down. I'm gonna slide my little blue thread that kinda of came out of my guide here. That's what's nice, is if you find yourself with a thread not totally where it should be, it's really easy to just hook it back in, including the one that kinda of came out at the top here. So let's do that needle threader one more time. Little notch at the top, put the thread side to side in his mouth, start about halfway up the needle, Push in gently, slide all the way down until it goes into the hole, and then use your tweezers to pull that loop out. And that makes the last one just as easy. So it really doesn't matter where all your needle threads are. You might like to kind of put them all facing the same direction. That is totally up to you. But once you get started, it really isn't um, a one place they have to be. We are ready to start cover stitching. Once everything is threaded, take your fabric, fold it in half. I'm not worried about doing like any specific hems. I really just want to see if everything is threaded correctly. Now, with a cover stitch machine, you're going to want to always have fabric underneath the needles. So I've raised the presser foot, taken my fabric, slid it all the way underneath until I can see where my fabric is underneath my needles, lower the presser foot down, and go ahead and start to stitch. Now these little threads will eventually be down and under the foot, so if you do want to just give them a little snip if they are pretty long, now they'll kind of disappear all the way to the end. 
Now before I go off the edge, let me show you how we're gonna get the fabric out of the machine. Start by taking your hand wheel and bring the needles all the way to their highest position. Now, this little trick that I'm gonna show you right now is a great way to secure the, the cover stitch so it doesn't actually come out. Lift up the presser foot and then take something, I usually use my scissor points, and I'm gonna come underneath the foot but above the fabric, and I'm kind of swiping, see the threads here? And I'm swiping them so they can come out and then I'm going to clip them. When I clip them and then pull out the back side, it magically knots on the back here. Now I'm still connected to that cover stitch, so you do get to clip twice, once at the beginning and then once here, but what it does is it locks this so it doesn't come out anymore, because that's the one that will come out if you do want it to release, but this is what a three needle cover stitch seam looks like when everything is threaded correctly. Now, if it doesn't look this pretty, we might need to just adjust a little bit of the tensions to make it look lay and lay nice at the top, and then also to make it look nice and smooth on the back. 